The thoughts that did go through my head as a kid is, am I gonna die? You know, am I gonna be a statistic in Minneapolis, Minnesota? I am outside just like any other person. You know, I've had kids around me, whether that be from my church or, you know, friends that have died from, you know, flyaway gunshots. Just being in their house and, and a little boy that I met a week prior was killed because he was sleeping on a couch and uh, a gunshot flew through his house. We grew up in North Minneapolis, which is right now a lot of crime. There was a party going on one night across the street, some people that had moved in, and it was just like way too many kids. And I said, okay, everybody, go to your room. So the minute they got up the stairs, we heard gunshots, and the little girl across the street had been shot. The kids were able to kind of look out the window and see all the commotion. How can I get out of this situation? What's my easiest way out? And it is playing basketball. Our whole community stayed together as we were raised as children, then we started raising our children together. And so it was very important. We did everything together. We are a very close-knit family. Every holiday we're spent together, every, every Christmas is at my grandparents' house. It did help being around all of my cousins all the time and you know, even my parents and just, it gave me a well-rounded, well-balanced way to grow up, I think. About the time that I started AAU and forming these friendships and all these relationships, my home life actually did start to get a little rough. She grew up in a house with one biological brother and then I did foster care, so I had three foster kids. And so we had a pretty good time. Then I got married. And while it started out good, he was great to her at first, and then it became more domestic with the discipline. My stepdad was very abusive. I went through a lot of domestic violence classes with my, my mom. Um, I was in foster care twice, and it was tough at home. He was raised in a very stern home and he was in, came from the military, and so we just had different views of how to raise children. Um, so he was a yeller, so it kind of made her go into her shell. I first noticed that it was affecting her when she always complained about her stomach hurting after I did a domestic violence class. And I was like, okay, something's wrong. You know, she's traumatized. And it wasn't only her, it was, you know, my other son and then my adopted son also. At some point in time, you have to make the choice between your marriage or your children. And my philosophy is I could always get another husband, I can't get more children. It was a tough decision, but it was a decision that had to be made because he, he made things that they weren't fun anymore. You know, basketball wasn't fun if he was there because he was always yelling. So yeah, it was, it was traumatic. It gives you more of a perspective of life that it can start as early. You know, I had to grow up really fast. Um, you know, I had to take care of my siblings really fast and, you know, at a young age. And that's hard to do. And I use that in a way of now is, you know, I get in trouble now, I'm like, well, at least I'm not getting a whooping. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, at least I'm not like being, you know, physically abused or something. And that gives me some type of solace, some type of peace with that. And, you know, that, that's to a fault to some extent, but it works for me, I guess. Um, you know, when I run into issues now, I'm like, well, you know, at least you're not at home anxious and nervous that you're gonna get in trouble for something that you didn't do. It makes you appreciate the very small things that you don't see are important, just naturally.
my life in basketball, I remember having a teammate, her name was Gloria, and she would come to practice and she didn't have nearly as much money as we all did. And not to say that we had any money at all either, but you know, just fundraising why she didn't have shoes. And I remember just giving her every pair of shoes that I had just to play in, you know, making sure that my mom goes to pick her up for practice so she can get there. I know that it's important to have that outlet when you do have things going on. And she was the youngest of like maybe eight kids. So I know that that is very, very difficult. I came from a family where my mom took people in, my grandmother took people in. And so our house has always been kind of transitional with other children that may not have a place to go. And it wasn't always foster kids. Sometimes it was kids whose parents may have been on drugs and they couldn't keep their kids and they'll call and say, hey, Nene, can you go pick up my kid? I need her to stay there. So I've probably raised maybe about 10 or 15 other kids without the help of the system just to have a safe place. And so I think your kids pick that up and they become caregivers as well. In the recent years of being in college basketball now, and you know, mental health has become a very important thing in college sports all around, not even just basketball. And you know, there's this huge stereotype around whether that be depression, anxiety, and taking medication for it or seeing someone for it. And you know, it's to me, you know, being that person that has went through it, I want to be the voice for us to be able to change that. I want people to know that it's okay to talk to someone that, you know. That helps, it does, you know, it may not cure your issue, but it does help and it's, it's the first step in the right direction if you, if you want it. I think Nia will always give back true love. I think she's learned from her experiences. I think with the new freshman class that comes in, just encouraging them that even though it may seem tough, you, you can still make it. Some of those girls that have gone through domestic violence with their parents, maybe like, you know, they related to me. And I'm like, you know, I gotta help them because I know plenty of people that are going through it. Having your name in the lights is not always where it's at. It's the unmentionables, you know, can you do the unmentionables to support people? I really wanna be a college coach. I am pursuing my master's in sports psychology. Being a coach and having that master's, I think is important because you do have to understand your players. You have to understand their background and where they come from. Why do they do the things they do? Why do they say what they say? Why do they play the way that they play? Um, and I think that that's very important when we're looking towards the future of college sports. I think that any community is really lucky to have her because she has a passion for other people to succeed, to make the people around her better. You want to be able to make it out of the hood is really what we say. And to be the first of my family to make it out and go to a four year school and just to be able to reward her with, hey, I went to college. Hey, I get to come back with a degree. I get to help more kids like me, you know, more families like us. I am very, very grateful for that.